Monza never disappoints. If you couldn't tell, I'm still on a high. If it, if it wasn't obvious who I rep as a driver and as a team, no words. Today was unbelievable. This track has yet again given us an unconventional podium. I mean, who could have predicted a McLaren 1-2? There are so many points to cover in this race, both in the first and second half, and we'll also be including a new segment called Driver Watch. More on that later. But we're going to jump straight into the pinnacle moment of this race, the collision between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. A lot of back and forth between who's at fault here. We know the Stewart's decision already giving Max Verstappen a three-place grid penalty at the next race. Cass, I'm curious to know your thoughts on the penalty that was given and of course what happened on track. It is a little difficult. I definitely do think that the fault is leaning a little bit more towards Max. There really wasn't enough room and honestly at a certain point you just kind of know that these coming togethers are going to happen more and more often throughout the season if neither driver is willing to back out and we've seen today that's not going to happen. When you look at the onboard it really doesn't look like there was a lot of space for Max so I wasn't too sure what he was thinking maybe he could try and squeeze it in but the curbs caught him really off guard here. Look I don't think Max expected to go airborne by any means and the people tossing out that accusation it's frankly just a little ridiculous. Ultimately there was still half the race left if he didn't get him on that lap red bull still was showing a decent amount of pace and maybe they could have battled it out through the next drs zone i mean honestly it just it seemed a little impulsive ultimately this doesn't have any impact on the drivers championship but I don't want to keep seeing this happen at future races. I want the championship to be decided fairly with on-track battles, strategy calls, not this blowing up at each other. It's just kind of getting ridiculous, but I really don't think this is going to be the end for these two. But thank God for that halo because those slow motion shots, really scary. So those are our thoughts. Of course, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think down in those comments. Was it Lewis? Was it Max? Was it just a racing incident? What do you think of the penalty? Let us know. So that was definitely the highlight of the first half, but backtracking it to that opening lap because it was quite the eventful first lap. We got to credit the sprint race because it did switch up the grid and gave us both Daniel and Max on that front row. Honestly, when I saw Daniel do that move into first place, I think I partially blacked out. That was so crazy. Lando too, they both had amazing starts. It was crazy, amazing. And I think we just knew going into that first chicane that this was going to be a very unpredictable and dramatic race. My eyes were also watching Hamilton to see how he was gonna make up some ground starting on fourth place. He got the jump on Lando, but just watching those two go back and forth, really entertaining stuff. But unfortunately, it didn't take long till we got our first collision. Gio taking to the escape road and coming back onto the track, hitting into the Ferrari, sending him spinning and pretty much ruining his qualifying performance. There honestly were a lot of close calls in this opening lap. We did see Lewis and Max go wheel to wheel. Ultimately, Lewis lost out and had to go off track, which ended up costing him the position to Norris and slotting him right back in fourth place where he started. Opening lap aside, we then watch Max versus Daniel. They're staying relatively close to each other. Max is within DRS. And you also see Lewis versus Lando. Really great defending from Lando. And it feels like Monza is really a test of defending. I mean, there's a reason that Monza is called the Temple of Speed. It's such high stakes, and since defending is such an important aspect of racing here, we saw a lot of drivers really put it out on the line. You have to be committed, maybe not always the best. We saw that with Perez today, kind of doing some risky maneuvers across this whole weekend, but it really paid off for the viewers because it was super exciting to watch the level of racing that we saw today. Another driver that took it just a bit too far was Esteban Ocon, getting close and actually colliding with Sebastian Vettel, awarding him a five second time penalty. Leave my man Seb alone. I swear to God he was a target today between Ocon and Mick, even though it wasn't Mick's fault, and Stroll. Leave him alone. Let him just have his nice race in peace, okay? Our last little point here to touch on in the first half was the pit stops. You had Daniel come in first, and it was an easy, breezy, beautiful pit stop by McLaren. 
On the contrary though, Red Bull suffered a lot here. They were trying to get a jump on the overcut, but it was 11.1 seconds, I think. But we also can't forget to mention that Hamilton had a poor pit stop, two seconds longer than it should have been. And then of course, as we all know, the collision happened. This brought out a safety car, and that brings us to the end of the first half. A lot of points to cover, like we said, so scoring this must have been difficult, Cass. It was definitely difficult to score. Starting off with excitement, I had an eight because there was action going on both at the front of the grid as well as the back for racing. I scored at a seven because there still was a fair bit of overtaking, but I had to take points away because it was kind of sloppy. We had some collisions. We had some people running wide. We had people not respecting track limits. So lost a few points there. And then of course, drama, full 10. Obviously full 10, you're not beating that. So that puts my score for the first half at roughly an 8.25. On my side, I scored my excitement all the way up at a nine. I was excited to see the pace that the McLaren had versus all the other cars. I didn't know who was gonna win this race. In terms of the racing, I scored it a seven. I was very happy with the defending I was seeing on track. And like you said, drama all the way up at a 10. Scoring my first half an 8.6. I'm gonna round that down to an 8.5. Kicking off the second half, still under safety car, but still a high level of drama because the Ferraris were able to come in and benefit from a pit stop. I was stressed over here because I was thinking, oh my God, the McLarens have lost the lead they had. Ended up not actually being the case. They actually all got away fairly well and Daniel was able to just pull ahead. Very good overtake from Lando to get P2 back. He had to go on the grass, which was very risky, especially if he just lost it. Then this also very much worked in the favor of Valtteri because he was going long on that first stint. The pit stop absolutely benefited Mercedes. You had Valtteri going up against Carlos and then more scuffles between Perez and Leclerc, which did not end off so well for Perez. Yeah, he was forced to go wide on one of the turns and actually gained a position on Leclerc and he didn't give it back for some reason. I honestly don't know what Red Bull were thinking in this situation. Sergio had already been involved in a similar scenario. He had to give the position back the first time. So why did they wait so long? The rest of us all saw it coming. It was a slam dunk penalty. I start to question the stewards just in these moments. How do they not radio to the team and tell them immediately, hey, give that place back? It's so obvious watching it that he gained an unfair advantage. I guess they wanted to believe that Red Bull would just do the right thing and give it back. But honestly, this is Formula One. This is a competition. They are going to try to take advantage of any and every opportunity they can, it is up to the stewards to step in and say, hey, no, guess what? That's not allowed. So Sergio gets a five second time penalty here, but I do start to question if Sergio did give the place back and Valtteri did get in front of both Sergio and Leclerc, would he have had a better chance to move up to win this race? I absolutely think so. Honestly, the only thing that was really keeping Valtteri back was Sergio, which definitely benefited McLaren, but with how Valtteri was performing today and how strong his pace was, I honestly think if that Red Bull wasn't a factor, he could have probably gotten past the McLarens fairly easily. With a few laps left, it seems like McLaren turned up the engines and decided to finally get away from the rest of the pack, and they pretty much went away with the victory here at this point. Some uh, very, very stressful last 20 laps for me over here. Sergio, despite his five second time penalty, did make enough gains to only fall back to fifth place, but it's a shame because they could have made it on the podium and capitalized on the championship leaders sort of falling out to maybe bring that constructors championship a bit closer. To me, it's still unpredictable about who is going to win this championship, both in terms of driver's championship and constructors championship. And that pretty much concludes the second half of this race. McLaren get a one, two in Ferrari's backyard, which is crucial for their fight for third place in the championship. How'd you score the second half, Cass? My excitement went up to a nine, and yes, this is biased, but honestly, I was still stressed out at how this was all going to go down, 
but very happy knowing that we were not going to get a standard podium. Racing I had at an eight because we saw some unbelievable battles going on. You had both Ferraris in the mix. You had the Red Bull, Valtteri powering from the back. It was just really great to see. And Lando's run off the grass, risky, but worth it. And then drama I also had at an eight just because we had so many time penalties in the mix. You still had the Haas's getting implicated somehow in this race. It was just very tense, especially when it came down to those initial pit stops behind the safety car. So my score for the second half of the race once again comes out to an 8.25. On my side, I scored my excitement at an eight just with that safety car restart. Everyone was so bunched together. So I was very tense at this moment because I wasn't sure who was gonna win the race. Racing scored it the same as the first half at a seven, all mostly for those defensive moves I was seeing. It was very pleasant to watch. However, my drama was a bit lower of a score at a six, just because we only really had one penalty and some questionable decisions from the Red Bull team. So when you combine all my scores, it comes out to a seven for the second half of this race. So when you combine all of our scores together, the Italian Grand Prix for 2021 comes out to an eight, putting it on par with the Hungarian Grand Prix. Here are the standings so far this season. Getting now into our new segment, our driver watch. And Cass, who's on our driver watch for this race? For this segment, we are going to spin a wheel that will randomly select one of the drivers from today's Grand Prix, and we'll just do a little bit more of a deep dive into their race because maybe they weren't shown as much on TV. We just wanna take a little bit of a closer look. So we have our wheel right here. You're only gonna see 18 names on it because I'm excluding the AlphaTauri team because they really didn't get that far into it. Who is it going to be? Are you kidding me? Nikita <laughs> Mazepin. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep this short and sweet. His race was a disaster. Colliding into his teammate, sending Mick off into Seb. Once again, do not touch Seb. Not on my watch. As we know, we started from the back of the grid, but we're also not expecting much from the Haas driver to make substantial gains. And then in the end, as we know, he had a mechanical problem and brought out a virtual safety car. Ta-da! <laughs> That's all we can really cover on Mazepin's race at Monza. It ended up in a DNF. Let us know your thoughts on this segment. Should we keep it or should we switch it up for the next time round? While you're there, don't forget to leave this video a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you in our next race review. Bye!